What is up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Some uh, lovely Queensland weather right here. Hopefully it's not too bad with the tin shed roof. You know, rain, noise, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in this one, I thought maybe some of you would benefit from how I installed this guy. So it's not currently completely installed, but I thought I might walk you through the process. It might help someone out uh, in regards to uh, installing this Holden Astro Electric Power Steering Pump or EPS. So let's get into that. I'll show you how I've set it up so far and what the pros and cons and all that kind of good stuff is about it. Perfect. Now first off, pro. The best thing is that it's a self-contained unit, it's small, uh, it's controllable. Obviously being electric, we can turn it off and turn it on. If you do a track day and you prefer the track not to have power steering, some people prefer not to have it. They like the feel, the feedback, all of that stuff. You can turn it off. Uh, you can have it turned off during starting when you're cranking it so it's not a draw on the battery, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a whole lot less draw on the motor as well. You don't have that parasitic draw, especially under high load while you're turning when there's a lot of back load hydraulically on the actual pump that sits on the motor. Uh, so that's good. It cleans up the bay. It reduces a bit of weight. I think that is a slightly lighter setup than the whole, oh, excuse me, the whole pulley setup. Um, you have to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's a little bit lighter and yeah. The other thing is the advantage is you can mount it pretty much anywhere you can fit it. So this is the best spot I found for this particular application. So we've got a K24, K20 head, uh, the six speed manual. And if you have a look in here, she is a very good fit. Close to the actual trans, the trans mount. We've got plenty of room to run out uh, hoses. These are just the OEM factory hoses. Uh, straight down there and on the side there's a port that I'll show you a little later that we add an AM6 to that as well and yeah she is good I guess next up we'll work out how to mount it pretty straightforward now what I have done is I have just brought online I'll chuck a link in the description um, a powder coated CNC water jet cut bracket so you can see this guy's just mounted on there real nice uh, powder coating just because I could have painted it myself but powder coating is just a lot more resilient um, and that is bolted through the chassis leg here and you can see one two and three now I've chosen to use it's a little bit pricey but I've used stainless uh, all thread which is just a really long length of threaded rod and some stainless hardware as well because I didn't know the lengths of the bolts I needed. Bolts in this kind of length and in stainless are very expensive. So I will just cut these down and probably chuck a couple of tacks on one of the nuts just to make the bolt myself essentially. And that's because you can see we're gonna have different lengths anyway. Now I could run another one through here, but I think three bolts. So I've drilled through, that's a 10.5 mm hole and 10.5mm, 10.5mm, it's a 10mm thread, M10 by 1.0, uh, all thread with the associated nuts to go with it. It's gonna look quite nice, very simple. Um, you can see up here, that's where it's mounted and currently sitting very flush. I've used a, I'm not sure if you guys can see in there, let me grab a torch. Probably left outside. Oh, he hasn't, nice. Okay, can you guys see that? Ah, oh, there we go. See that little spacer there? That is actually just an old spacer from a seat belt. Um, and that sits in there perfectly, spaces it out. When I tighten it down, it doesn't flex the plate or anything like that. You can see on the plate itself, this is a Lowe's, L-O-W-E-S. You can Google it, have a look. Um, it's about $150 all up for the brackets and all the bits and pieces you need. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good. She's a tidy unit and the powder coating is actually resilient to the brake fluid and uh, the power steering fluid. So it's not gonna crackle and bubble if you just use like a cheap paint on a generic steel bracket like some might. Um, yeah, and you can see the radiator. Not the most common location for the radiator, I don't think, but she fits in there nicely. And yeah, that's with the torch. 
needs a good clean obviously but that is our initial setup that's how it's mounted and then from here we've got our wiring to do and we have our fittings down on the power steering rack to swap over as well and i'll chuck all of these parts in the description we're just going to be using uh primarily aeroflow fittings raceworks aeroflow um i think the fitting that comes out of the pump which is an AM6 uh, so you get braided lines and everything for this obviously cleans it up um, I think that's a race works or something and again links in the description for things like this things like the fittings this is a 80 amp circuit breaker so under load there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hydraulic pressure on the motor um, and I've read up on this quite a bit and it seems there's a few reports of anything under 80 amps full lock when it's really winding it in um, anything less than 80 amps and it'll pop a fuse so I thought we'll use a breaker that way if it does pop it we can just reset it and keep going from there and you can just swap out to a larger breaker later but anyway let's get into pulling this back off we need to cut these bad boys hair down and make actual bolts out of them because currently that's probably not going to be too suitable and yeah let's get some bolts let's clean it all up and get it back in all righty now we got these cut down you can see they are pretty much all the same length uh, the one at the back is a little bit longer but better to be safe than sorry and i didn't really want to have to measure all that kind of stuff pretty simple setup very nice bracket obviously i need a wipe of the power steering fluid back on it's looking pretty manky but good unit nice solid holds it i mean you could make this at home but i dare say by the time you've made it you're probably better off just buying one a little bit easier um so it's looking good now i was going to tig them but instead of setting up the welder i'm just going to use some permanent loctite here uh, let's have a look. just going to wind this back i'm going to chuck some loctite on there nice and easy let it sit for a little bit. I've got to go out again anyway, so we'll be able to let that sit for a bit. And essentially, we'll just chuck some washers in there, dude. Um, nice, clean, simple setup. Um, definitely going to be held in there nice and tight. This is the seatbelt washer that I mentioned. Perfect fit, absolutely perfect. I'm going to try and find a smaller one, um, or even just a, a washer, actually. And I'll show you why. It's for this one here. This sits right against the... Um, the bracket that holds the transmission mount so the transmission mount hair goes down to the gearbox and the thickness of that is what I need to find because this sits on it so this sits on the lip of that so I just want to kind of spread the weight out push this out a bit so it's not crushing that um, if I leave it to crush it it might crack the paint or something like that so we got some washers and whatnot over there we'll be able to sort that out and yeah let's do that we'll get that done we'll get this back in and bolted on all cleaned up ready for the pump pump is clean obviously it's not down there but clean our bracket is completely mounted now so that's nice and firm i've got a stainless washer there to space it out you can see the lip it's about a millimeter thick side of that i just don't want it rubbing and peeling the paint off there and we've got another one here just to protect the paint obviously a large washer down the bottom and then we got these bad boys on the inside that is solid as all frick not going anywhere which is good it's what we want um over well, here for a bit pump so the pump is now clean for the most part just gave it a quick wipe down and separated all the wires so you've got your earth your positive and i believe these two are your 12 volt triggers now you can supply 12 volt to one at a constant uh, and then the second one on ignition and it'll spool up straight away i'm not too sure about battery drain from running a constant to this it'd be like uh yeah we'll have to try that out i guess see how that goes or you can have it running one to ignition on uh and then one to accessory or one to accessory one to ignition on and that'll spool it straight away or you can have 12 volt to both on key on and that'll do a slow kind of build up a slow spool but we'll go through that later i'll show you what i mean um, like I said, now this guy is clean. We got this fitting here from Speedflow. This is the correct fitting for the pump. You can see she's got a little O-ring down there. Just get that open. Expensive little guy. 
but you get the right part. And you can see just on the inside here, when you take the old one off, it will also have an O-ring in there, the old uh, OEM Holden or Astra hardline. So we're going to get this guy in and no thread lock or anything like that needed. And that goes into the port at the back here or at the front in our case. You can see she goes all the way down and you might not be able to see in there, but you can see where the O-ring needs to seat given that it is a high pressure line. And in we go. I'll get this in and tightened. And, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably do this off camera, maybe. Oh, oh there we go. Beautiful. And obviously, for this one here, no fitting is gonna thread or screw to that. So, we just have some of these um, kind of like beauty covers, I guess. You can see it's got a worm drive on there, and that just slips over the Aeroflow uh, braided. And six line, you just cut some of the actual braiding back, and then that'll tie down. You can have that sitting on there and tidies it up, makes it a little bit more presentable. Stops fraying off the end of the braided line and everything like that as well. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this on. We're gonna get it in the car and see what it looks like. Yeah, right, boys. Uh, where are we at? Got some wiring done. Pretty straightforward. Positive, negative, done. You know, simple. So the wire is just kind of chilling out here. I am gonna run it up and under through here. I'm gonna double wrap this and we'll run it up under the engine mount here, along the back and up to the battery when we are ready. I'm just gonna leave the tail for now. And you can see we got positive and negative. The negative, because this tail was quite short, it's actually somewhat beneficial. I put two terminals on there. So one terminal for the earth coming straight up here, connects to the body of this. And then the earth that comes from the battery is actually gonna earth the body of this as well and means if this fails or it needs servicing uh, we can actually just kind of remove the allen bolt here and that lets us kind of remove it from here as well from the actual breaker and yeah you know pretty simple you gotta think of the things long term as well because this might fail uh, might be perfect for its whole life who knows but we don't want to have to go cut wiring later on and the same with these guys here, probably gonna chuck a uh, weatherproof plug on. We will splice them together, cut the earth short, splice these guys together, chuck a plug on there, and we'll run them along the same kind of route as this and then up into the firewall somewhere up here. Let's see where the chassis loom kind of tucks in there. We'll run it up under the battery tray, so it's nice and hidden. Um, maybe even run it with this, tape it together, because I don't think we're gonna get like EMF, like uh, electromagnetic interference from this cable in there, because that is just an on and off switch. Um, yeah, all right, next up, I wanna actually test this. Even without the battery and stuff, we can just jump that. I wanna test it, which means fluid and lines. So that's gonna be next. I'm going to make up the lines for this guy here. So we got a single 90 coming off. Um, and this is like a full flow 90 as well. So it's not like a short radius or anything uh, with the, how do I explain that? So some of the 90s you can get are really tight. Uh, they have short radius and that would bring it too close to the bracket. So this is just a regular 90 AN6 fitting. So that should do fine. And this one here, we're gonna obviously use, where did I put one? I think I got one, yeah, we got one. Same deal with the fuel return line. We're just gonna use one of these guys. And chuck her on, be a tight fit most likely, but should do fine, chuck that on. And then we're gonna run them somehow, probably down under, around, over the top of the rear engine mount and down to there. So you can see this already has two uh, fittings on there for this loop uh, in the power steering rack and I believe I done that quite some time ago actually and we're gonna whip that off chuck some new AN fittings on and run these lines now which is gonna look like this mm -hmm. all right two lines cut pretty straightforward two cuts and we can see you've got them running all the way down around this other side here Nicely tucked up and out of the way. We'll get some joiners and just hold them together like little billet connectors. And runs all the way up here. Where's my torches? Stuff and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, going flat. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We'll wait for this, shall we? Alright, so you can see we got the two lines, they are connected, looking good. They tuck up and under the box, run down through there, along there, along the chest rail, up and around down the back, back to the rack there. So, I guess essentially now we can do a dummy test. See if she spools up and runs nicely. We'll get some fluid in there. Now I'm just running the Honda fluid because, like I said earlier, it's easy to replace the pump than it is the rack. All right, boys. So it is pretty much done and dusted for this video. Anyway, we have this guy pretty much all installed. We're gonna chuck some terminals on here. Um, I have the battery tray drying at the moment it's pretty wet so it's going to take a while but just resprayed the battery tray had a bit of rust we had to deal with on that and thus i've just got our battery chilling over here so how good does that look almost oem very simple very clean the wiring's nicely tucked our braided lines are looking good they run along down under here and you get some p-clamps and secure those real nice connected to the power steering rack. So uh, just a note, and I'll put it in the comments as well, not the comments, uh, just under this video. Um, the high pressure line goes to the bottom one. The return line is the top. And I had those switch around the other way, so you'll know when you do, because the steering wheel will fight you for everything that you want to do, and it will do the opposite. But, you know, gotta learn somehow. Anyway, that is how those are run. All right, boys, so we are done. Everything is pretty much in. Pretty happy with it, actually. She looks almost OEM, very tidy, very clean. We gave all the paint a good wipe down because my dirty mitts were all over it. Braided lines are looking good. They run down and across to our power steering rack down here. And a note for that is the high pressure goes to the bottom and the return is from the top. You just don't want to do what I do and waste a bit of fluid and have to swap them around. Um, You'll actually know if they're the wrong way around because like I showed before, the steering wheel will fight you, it'll do some weird things back and forth, and it's almost impossible to bleed it too. So yeah, anyway, top, bottom, all that stuff. Now it's all in, it's all good, it's all bled, it's all running full of fluid. And this is how I wired it. So we've got our positive and negative run up to here, obviously. Runs along the chest rail and up. Um, waiting for my battery tray bracket to dry. I've just painted that. It's a bit wet out, so it's gonna take a while for that to dry. Don't wanna bolt it down with uh, soft paint, so we'll leave that for a bit, but this kind of rig here will do for now. Positive and negative setup. Our positive runs through this ADM uh, breaker here, so we can actually switch it. If we don't need it for the track, we can just simply turn it off, uh, turn it on, or if it gets too much load, it'll crack and that'll save the battery, it'll save fuses and all of that. That's good there. Um, we've got our three wires, two of which we use. One of them is null and void, but that's just run inside there and terminated. Um, they connect and then run all the way up along with this wire here. That is our yellow wire. So this is the on wire. This will turn the pump on when it sees 12 volts. And options for that are, you can run it into the cabinet and run it from your fuel pump relay. Uh, so when the fuel pump turns on, the power steering turns on, you can run it from your ignition. So when you turn it to accessory or to on, either one, uh, 12 volts, that'll turn the pump on. Uh, you don't need a relay or anything for the setup either. Just 12 volts straight to those wires is fine. Um, and what I'll likely do is run it straight to the fuse box and we've got our ECU 15 amp and I'll just tap it onto the back of that wire there. So when the ignition is on and the ECU fires up, so will the power steering pump but anyway let's uh let's have a listen see how loud she is not actually as bad as i thought so 12 volt it is earthed we just hook this guy up to 12 volts like so
And that is that. That is that fully kind of charged up. It builds up all its pressure to start with, and then it tapers back off. Um, the rack is now pressurized, and we're good to go. So you just come around. Man, some really, really bad weather lately. And single-handedly, we can kind of just mob around with the steering wheel now. Either way, works. You can hear the pump. The pump kind of just spools up a bit when it's under load. And then we can go full lock and we'll test and see if it will crack that breaker. So that's, uh, that's full lock. You can see the fluid starts really moving. The pump has a good whine, but we are good at full lock as well. It's not tripping out, it's not turning off, it's not breaking anything, so we're good. Whole power steering setup is now done. Uh, and you can see I've got her on the charger as well. She's pulling 12 amps at the moment. Um, I might just put the camera down or lift this guy up. <sighs> And that looks like it should stay there. Now let's see at full lock how many amps she might draw. So she's at eight now. It's 11. And that's just lightly turning the wheel, no real load on it. So you can see she increases quite a lot. Full lock, 20 amps. And that might be just the maximum that, that, uh, that the charger can provide. It looks like it is. She, she spikes right up to 20 real quick, short period of time on the power steering pump. So I dare say we'll have to get our multimeter on there and we'll really test that out, see how many amps that she draws under full load, because I dare say it's going to be a metric shit ton. But yeah, she's working. She is good. Uh, any questions, any comments, any suggestions, uh, chuck them in the comment section and I'll get back to you guys like I usually do. And yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, have a good one.